Item number SCP-1836 Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures SCP-1836 is to be recontained within Site-641, which is disguised as an active ecological research station and wildlife preserve at North 74.13 minus, West 93.81, encompassing the entirety of the Cunningham Inlet. The research station is to be staffed with a full-time research team and support staff, including a classically trained Engakuk and a certified cosmetologist. A 50km radius of protected waters is to be maintained around the site. These waters are to be patrolled by armed Foundation assets disguised as research personnel or environmental activist elements. Trespassers are to be interrogated, administered level C amnestics, and released into the nearest settlement. An access causeway is to be maintained into one of the caves that perforate SCP-1836. Access to the causeway is restricted to the site director, on-site shaman and cosmetologist. Additional personnel may be permitted by majority consensus of the personnel with access or by direct request of relevant Level 4 personnel. In the event of hostile SCP-1836 activity, the staff shaman and cosmetologist are to enter SCP-1836 using the causeway and enact the Help Enhance Protocol. In the event of failure, Foundation personnel are to fall back and observe SCP-1836 until it enters its inactive state, at which time they are to mobilize MTF-89E, Thomas's Tuggers, to tow SCP-1836 back to Site-641. Update. The Help Enhance Protocol has been found to have variable effectiveness. To date, the protocol has failed on several occasions to completely quell SCP-1836. Outbursts have occurred causing three fatalities and twelve injuries, necessitating refilling of key staff positions. In order to maintain containment, the on-site shaman has been given wide discretion in regard to the appropriate ritualistic tact to take when SCP-1836 becomes hostile. Additional resources have been made available to facilitate containment. Update. Following the incidents of No birds are to be allowed to enter proximity with SCP-1836 during the Help Enhance Protocol. All birds roosting on the grapple bar on SCP-1836 or within a 30-meter radius are to be chased off or exterminated. Birds exterminated in this way will be handed over to the on-site shaman for appropriate ritualistic disposal. Description. SCP-1836 is a green, non-tabular pinnacle iceberg peaking 90 meters above the surface, approximately 130 meters in length. It is estimated to weigh between 150,000 and 175,000 metric tons and extends approximately 450 meters below the surface. Submersible surveys of the SCP-1836 have revealed many large tunnels extending into the object. Aside from coloration, the object appears to be an ordinary iceberg. Core samples have revealed the iceberg is composed of ordinary ice. Algae and trap within the ice give the object its unusual coloration. SCP-1836-1 is a pod of mammalian organisms of the order of Cetacea that are housed within SCP-1836. The pod is composed of several different species with fluctuating composition and number. The cause of these changes in the pod's composition are unknown. To date, the pod has included specimens tentatively identified as members of the Bacillosauridae, Ambulocetidae, Acrophysidae, and Urhinodelphinidae. Recently, Lepos vexillifer has been sighted during SCP-1836 activity. The mechanism by which interspecies communication is facilitated between pod members is currently under investigation. The anomalous properties of the object manifest when marine mammals are hunted at sea or on the shoreline by any people who are not of Alut. Yukpik or Inupiat ethnicity within a 50 km radius of the object. SCP-1836 will begin to accelerate toward the hunt until the object reaches a speed of 35 knots. At this point the hunted mammal or mammals, now designated SCP-1836-2, will change bearing to head directly toward SCP-1836. If underwater topography makes this impossible, SCP-1836-2 will adopt the most efficient course to bring it within proximity of SCP-1836. If SCP-1836-2 reaches SCP-1836 before being overtaken, SCP-1836-2 will place the object between itself and the hunters. As SCP-1836 is strictly ocean-going, it can take no further action against landbound hunters. 
If the hunter or hunters continue pursuing SCP-1836-2 in an ocean-going vessel, however, SCP-1836 will proceed to ram the hunting vessel until it breaches the hull. It will then extrude part of itself into the hull breach and expand, widening the breach. This process will continue until the vessel becomes structurally unsound or begins to sink, at which point the extension will retract. If no marine mammals were killed or injured during the hunt, SCP-1836 will dislodge from the vessel at this point and drift away, ceasing activity. If any marine mammals were killed or injured during the hunt, however, SCP-1836 will remain in close proximity to the sinking vessel. When the hunters evacuate the sinking vessel, between 5 and 30 instances of SCP-1836-1 will emerge from the submerged portions of SCP-1836 and engage the hunters, dragging them into the submerged caverns within SCP-1836. The fate of these individuals is a matter of ongoing investigation. Expeditions into SCP-1836 are pending approval. Update. After a brief expedition into the interior of SCP-1836, a small central chamber was discovered. Within the walls of this chamber is a frozen, well-preserved corpse of a young woman, of manipulated ethnicity. The corpse has suffered injuries in the past and is missing its hands and the wrist. Only the head of the corpse is exposed to the open air. Due to safety concerns, only the on-site shaman and cosmetologist are to have access to this chamber. Addendum Interviewed Tariq Le Chatier, On-site shaman Interviewer Agent Scout Fullbrush Forward Following hostile activity by SCP-1836 on Tariq Le Chatier was called to begin the Help in Hand protocol. After 80 minutes had elapsed, SCP-1836 ceased activity and Le Chatier emerged from SCP-1836 with injuries reminiscent of prolonged exposure to the elements and several bite marks consistent with human and dolphin jaw architecture on his extremities. He provided the following debriefing to Agent Fullbrush after receiving medical attention. Begin log. Alright, we're recording. <sighs> Let's begin then. For the record, Agent Fullbrush debriefing Tirak Le Chatier. It's Tariq. We've known each other for a year now. I'm sorry. It's fine, just… Alright, can you tell me what happened on… What, yesterday afternoon? Yesterday she got a little mad at me is all. I'm terrible with a comb and I tug too hard and she nipped me a bit. It's her way. Can you elaborate? Sure. Every once in a while, the ivory comb gets stuck after I burn the incense and dabbed her with sacred oil. I don't know how her hair manages to get so entangled since she's usually just sitting there. When you say stuck, stuck, like when I comb her hair inside that frozen living room of hers, sometimes it comes to a knot and it gets caught. Do you comb your own hair full brush? It works like that. If I tug too hard on my own, that's no big deal, but when I tug on her hair, and sometimes they get nipped because, let's face it, I don't know what to do with that much hair and she's a sensitive lady. How do you normally cope with SCP-1836 when it reacts that way to your ritual? Eh, depends on her mood. Sometimes I step back and wait her out. Sometimes I have to sing a little something, burn a different incense, offer a sled dog. Sometimes she just wants me to leave. I think that I'm coming as a man to her house is disconcerting. Usually when you placate her, you're supposed to look like a fish or send a fish with the comb in your stead. Right. Is there anything the Foundation could do to improve your ability to control SCP-1836? No. There's nothing you can do to improve control, but you people just don't like listening to that. So then, you can help by giving me another pair of hands to help me out, preferably one who knows how to deal with long ladies' hair. Get me a hairdresser. Oh, and untie my hand with pre-ritual preparations. Not every one of her outbursts the same. She's got feelings, even if she isn't willing to tell you qual you not, because you can't be bothered to learn how. So formally you'd like to request an assistant with hair care experience and greater operational latitude. Yes, that sounds about right. I'll get the paperwork. We'll see what happens. End log. Incident Report 110-614 Level 3 Authorization Only Incident Report 110-614 Date 13 Location Site 641 Description On 13 SCP-1836 broke containment. During a routine implementation of the Help Enhanced Protocol, the on-site shaman, Tariq Lachatier, was interrupted by an unknown party during his procedure. 
The following is a summary of the video surveillance footage taken by the observation post. 000. SCP-1836 is immobile, resting against the gravel bar. The sea is calm and the Avery fence is in place. 05. The water around SCP-1836 begins to churn. The layer of green ice curls into swirling patterns. SCP-1836 has entered an active state. 07. Structural deformations appear on the surface of SCP-1836. SCP-1836 appears to be attempting to withdraw from the gravel bar. 15. Tariq Lachatier arrives and begins pre-entry preparations, accompanied by Lydia O'Foot, on-site cosmetologist. After ten minutes of preparation and burning of incense, they enter SCP-1836. 32. Unusual cloud formation detected by perimeter defense assets. Site 641 is placed on emergency weather alert. Ambient temperature falls from 15 degrees Celsius to negative 4 degrees Celsius. No warnings have been issued by local weather services. SCP-1836 slows its motion. Observation posts receive a short radio message indicating that the Help Enhanced Protocol is underway and will calm SCP-1836 shortly. 56. Foundation perimeter hydrophones detect elevated whale song levels. Analysis by staff marine biologists indicates that the song is not associated with mating or feeding behaviors. 123. La Chatier and O'Foot have not yet emerged from SCP-1836. Radio contact indicates that the Help Enhanced Protocol is still ongoing. 130. The unusual cloud formations occludes the airspace over Site-641 and stops moving with prevailing winds. Closer inspection reveals the cloud formation of the flock composed entirely of northern Fulmar, Fulmaris Glacius. The flock descends and begins to harass site staff. The high concentration of Fulmar makes it impossible for staff to conduct outdoor activities. Staff are ordered indoors. The Fulmar make no attempt to break into site facilities with the exception of the aviary fence, which is attacked by the flock. SCP-1836 violently lists and jostles during this time. 134. Repeated attempts to contact La Chatier and O'Foot have failed. SCP-1836 displays more agitation and is deforming in a manner consistent with an attack on a ship. It is postulated that SCP-1836 is attempting to breach the aviary cage and engage the Fulmar. The aviary cage is under continuous assault by the flock during this time. 219. Site security efforts to drive off the flock have failed. Security staff attempt to keep the aviary fence clear using small iron fire. Signal flares and noise deterrents. None of these are effective. The extermination of individual members of the flock is not significant in regard to the total population. 243. A hole in the aviary fence allows a wave of Fulmar to breach containment. They swarm the interior of the fence. A single large toothed pelican like bird of unknown species land on the gravel bar and metamorphoses into a humanoid figure wearing local traditional garments. This figure is briefly seen darting up the catwalk before the camera is obscured by birds. 317. A loud groaning sound consistent with glacial calving is emitted from SCP-1836. The iceberg shudders and wrenches free of the gravel bar. SCP-1836 proceeds to ram the aviary cage. 320. Le Chatier and O'Foot are violently expelled from the entrance causeway. Both are unconscious and demonstrate defensive wounds, frostbite, and bite marks. 322. SCP-1836 breaks through the aviary cage and begins to move into open water. Foundation MTF-89E is mobilized to recontain SCP-1836. 340. SCP-1836 enters the Barrow Strait and begins moving west. MTF-89E is in pursuit. 450. MTF-89E is harried by flocks of Fulmar and by contact with hostile cetaceans. After one of MTF-89E's vessels is nearly capsized, Site Director Park issues a retreat to regroup and reassess. Forward. After SCP-1836 breached containment, Le Chatier and O'Foot were rushed to the infirmary. Le Chatier suffered several deep puncture wounds to his center of mass. On autopsy, it was revealed that Le Chatier's chest, the inside, O'Foot suffered minor defensive wounds and small injuries consistent with exposure to sub-freezing temperatures. The following is a transcript of her debriefing. Interviewer, Agent Scout Fullbrush. Interviewed, Lydia O'Foot. Right, let's begin. Can you please state your name and ID number for the record? Lydia O'Foot, 
<laughs> Hairdressers of the Gods. <laughs> Funny. Can you describe to me what happened yesterday? I don't know where to start. Begin at the beginning. What happened when you and Le Chatier went inside? Well, T had just finished the pre-ritual stuff. You know, the incense, seal blubber, all this talk of being clean. We hiked on up inside and I started combing her hair like usual. Then things got… weirder. In what way? At first I thought it was just T being paranoid. He kept on asking me if I was doing anything differently and I told him no. I'm brushing and trimming like I always do. I tell him that I'm not pulling any knots, and that her hair is just fine, that it's something else maybe. I know this is hard to talk about, but please continue. I don't really know, I'm just a hairdresser. Did La Chatier say or do anything unusual before you were interrupted? I remember T saying something about how she wouldn't stop talking about her husband, her ex-husband. Something about a restraining order and coming to visit. Time doesn't pass right inside there. Anyway, I remember the room shaking and she started shrieking something fierce, like I had pulled on her too hard. I got away and slipped on the ice, that's when things got worse. Our surveillance indicates that something walked up into SCP-1836 during the incident outside. Is this what you're talking about? Yeah, I saw this person in Mukluks and a parka come in. They threw literally threw T aside and stabbed him with little bird feet, claws, hidden up inside his sleeves. There wasn't any blood. I don't know how, but T didn't bleed. He just fell, laid there. The guy who who killed T walked up to her and started talking. What did he say? He said that he knew he wasn't supposed to talk to her anymore, that he was sorry to disturb her. He said something like, even though we're divorced, I still care about you, and I couldn't let them keep you away from your children. Then what happened? He said something about T being a traitor to the art, roughed me up a bit, said I was good at my job, said that I was good enough to her to avoid what happened to T. He tossed us out. I bumped my head on the catwalk and everything went gray. I came to in the infirmary. Is there anything else you remember? Anything important? I don't know. That man. That man was so strange and so angry. He kept talking about jailers and injustice. When he cut me, he called it a snake bite, but said something about having no poison. Ugh. I honestly don't know if that's important or not. We can continue this later if you like. Give you some more time to deal with it. I'd like that. It's just a lot to chew. T was a kind soul. A good friend. End recording.